Before adding material to the hopper, install the burp guard. The burp guard prevents material from splashing out when the unit is turned off with only a small amount of material remaining in the hopper. Pour the texture mixture into the hopper. Check that the on-off switch is in the off position, then plug the unit into a grounded electrical outlet. Verify that the air valve on the spray gun is in the closed position. Now turn the selector switch to the sprayer position and turn the on-off switch to on. If your sprayer includes a material flow adjustment feature, turn it clockwise to the high flow position. Trigger the gun into a waste bucket until material sprays out of the gun. Release the trigger, aim the gun into the material hopper and trigger the gun. Recirculate the material back into the hopper, allowing any remaining air in the system to work its way out of the material hose. Once you have a steady flow of material from the gun, you're ready to spray. Remember to turn the machine off after you're done recirculating the material. There are four main factors to consider when setting up your system to produce your desired texture finish. They are nozzle size, airflow, material flow, and material mix or thickness. Proper nozzle selection is dependent upon the desired finish. This chart located in your operating instructions will help you determine the correct nozzle for your application. In general, use a smaller nozzle size to create a finer finish and a larger nozzle size to create a larger or coarser finish. Airflow is controlled at the spray gun with the air valve. Start with the airflow valve in about the half open position. Opening the air valve further increases airflow through the gun and will produce a finer spray finish. Close the air valve to reduce the airflow through the gun to produce a coarser spray finish. If your sprayer features material flow adjustment at the pump, you can turn the flow control knob clockwise to increase material flow and counterclockwise to decrease material flow. For thin materials, you may want to turn down the material flow. For thicker materials, you may want to set the flow control at the highest flow setting. Your spray gun includes a material flow adjustment nut that regulates the needle travel and the amount of material flow out of the gun. Start with the adjustment nut in the full forward position. If a finer spray pattern or a smaller droplet size is desired, rotate the nut counterclockwise to decrease the amount of material flowing out of the gun. The last factor to consider in creating your desired finish is the material mix. As a rule of thumb, the thinner the material, the more output and or finer texture finish you'll produce, and the thicker the material, the less output and or coarser the texture finish will be. Here are some common finishes and settings to achieve those finishes. For orange peel or a fine splatter, use a smaller nozzle size and adjust the air valve mostly open. Use a thinner material mix and if necessary, turn down the material flow. For knockdown or heavier splatter, use a larger nozzle size and adjust the air valve mostly closed. Use a thicker material mix and turn up the material flow adjustment. For acoustic ceiling textures, use a medium to largest nozzle size and adjust the air valve mostly open. To test your spray pattern, use a piece of cardboard or spare piece of drywall board. Recognize that pressure will have built up in the system when you are not triggering the gun. To prevent material surge on your wall when you first trigger the gun, point the gun off of the work surface onto a drop cloth or protective film, then move on to the work surface. Start with the gun 24 to 30 inches from the surface and apply your texture using a sweeping circular motion. If you are having trouble applying a nice even texture pattern, you may have to turn down your material flow adjustment and move slower. When spraying simulated acoustic, an orange peel, or small splatter finish, it is often desirable to use a cross-hatching method, where one pass is applied horizontally, followed by a second pass that is applied vertically. This will minimize track marks and ensure that you have a nice, consistent finish across the entire surface. A knockdown finish is created by pulling a flat object across a recently applied splatter finish, simply knocking down the top of the splatter to create a unique look. There are several types of knockdown tools available on the market today. Consult the store where you purchased your sprayer for tools and products that make completing a knockdown finish fast and easy. No matter what the texture finish you want to achieve, your Graco Texture Sprayer can help you get the job done quickly and easily. With a little practice, this easy-to-use sprayer will have you spraying like a pro in no time. 
Some models also include a touch-up hopper that can be attached to the top of your texture spray gun, which converts it to a hopper gun for small touch-up jobs or repairs. To attach the touch-up hopper, turn off the unit and relieve pressure by spraying into the material hopper. Remove the hopper attachment plug from the top of the gun and connect the touch-up hopper. Then remove the material hose and securely fasten the material hose plug on the bottom side of the gun. Now connect the air hose to the air valve at the bottom of the gun. Next, pour pre-mixed material into the hopper. Now turn the selector switch to the hopper gun position and then turn the on-off switch to on. Start with the gun 24 to 30 inches from the surface and apply your texture using a sweeping circular motion. To reduce the flow of material while using the hopper gun, you should use the flow adjustment nut on the gun to adjust the amount of material output, as well as the air valve to adjust the amount of air output. 